There's an old saying that applies aptly here. There is strength in numbers. Guyana, besides being the land of many waters, is the land of small businesses. I am not telling you anything you don't know. Whereas large businesses are fewer in numbers, there are thousands of small and micro enterprises in the country. These smaller firms are the ones that count, account for most of the employment. However, to be competitive in an increasingly globalized market, you have to be efficient, innovative, and agile. Some businesses, especially informal ones, struggle with productivity and efficiency issues. When you are small, you may have to band together in well-functioning, coherent agglomerations or well-integrated chains to compete effectively both inside and outside the country. Another point we'd like to, to, we'd like to share and we think is important is access to business credit and improved payment services. The financial system is marked by high levels of liquidity, wide interest rate spreads, high collateral requirements, and tendency to predominantly offer short loan tenors. The vast majority of businesses in the country are medium, small, and micro enterprises, and they are largely excluded due to high collateral requirements. Despite the significant expansion, and we recognize that in private sector credit, most seem to have gone to mortgage finance, consumer lending, and large firms. Getting credit in the hands of entrepreneurs is one of the key factors in accelerating productivity gains, business expansion, job creation, and income growth. Areas of fa action may include, and let me share again one to few ideas while we were preparing this paper. Transfer of knowledge of appropriate and proven SME lending technologies to financial institutions. Building acceptance for substitute for fixed collaterals, credit bureaus, and movable property registries. Encourage more leasing and analyze the current legal framework for adequacy and suggest changes where necessary. Continue to improve enforcement. Invest in mobile banking and payment systems so as to reduce transaction costs for all parties, especially business persons. And in this last point, I would like to, in light of what we have been reading in the, in the press these last, these last few days and weeks, in light of the impasse of the anti money laundering bill, this last point will not be able to evolve. In the absence of an anti money laundering bill, they will not only affect the time of transfers, as was mentioned today, that I, if I remember correctly, was, has jumped from two to five days, but will also prevent the country in innovative mobile banking. Why mobile banking? Hence, mobile banking is agility. And anything, agility is benefits and low transaction. Imagine being in a remote part of Guyana and able to transfer or having a transfer and making service alone without having to come to Georgetown or any main cities of the country. These things will not evolve in the present situation. One last point is diversification and innovation. Guyana's economy is based on extractive activities. I'm not saying anything, nobody knows here. Gold, bauxite, manganese, logging, among the few. Another one is, of course, as we know, the agricultural pursuits are rice, sugar, vegetable fruits, shrimp. Gold accounts for 35% of exports, and rice, 13. More than many of the existing manufacturing activities are closely linked to agriculture. They are involved in food processing, distilling, beverages, rice milling, fish, and meat processing. To continue to grow and develop resilience to commodity price shock, the economy has to diversify and add more value to its primary commodities. Foreign direct investment has been successfully attracted for mining due to a large endowment of minerals and low cost of extraction, but more foreign direct investments, FDIs as we commonly call them, have to be attract, has to be attracted to other sectors. The competitive and comparative advantages of promising but underdeveloped sectors have to be tied to both, to, to 
both outsiders and nationals. Food for thought shortlist that we looked at. Export promotion. Example, once again, coconut. We do like coconut at the IBDB, it seems. And then uh, it's many byproducts. Aquaculture, heart of palm, fruit juice, non-timber products, medicinal plant extract. Others, say other, other areas, tapping on the carbon credit markets by promoting carbon mitigating activities, such as, such as sustainable forestry, no-till agriculture, energy co-generation, co uh, co and renewable energy. Introduction of efficient and clean technologies and production processes, retrofitting of buildings to make them more energy and water efficient. Promotion of tourism and ecotourism, promotion of knowledge, intensive industries such as global service, outsourcing, science and technology that could help to absorb the many well-educated people produced in Guyana each year. Assistance in trade uh, finance facilitation, training and technical assistance are available from different sources, but organizations, core, uh, organization, coherent plans, and partnership have to be developed, and only you can do that. In closing, I would like to say the private sector has done much. More needs to be done, and we and other development partners are here to assist in the process if needed. Take risks, experience new things, share those experiences with us. Together, we can work and do much more than working separately. I wish you every success on the launch of the magazine and on the many other initiatives of the George, Georgetown Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for having me and inviting me and allowing me to speak. Thank you very much. Mrs. McKinnon, an extraordinary presentation. I'm sure the invaluable information you provided on such issues as the positive growth of the private sector over the past years, the contribution of the private sector to the economy, public-private sector partnership, in no doubt will prove beneficial to us. In addition to your valuable advice referred to earlier in your presentation, will no doubt be a great assistance to us as we continue working towards moving into a diverse economy in partnership with the IBD. Thank you very much. Finally, I would like to call to the podium Mr. Nicholas Boyer, Secretary of the GCCI, who will now present the vote of thanks. Mr. Boyer, please. All right, bear with me just a few moments more. So let's get the formalities out of the way. So honorable prime minister, right? Members of the opposition, distinguished private sector leaders, special invitees, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to have been asked here to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion on behalf of the chamber. I would first like to say a big thank you to Ms. Sophie McConnell, country representative of the Inter-American Development Bank, for her enlightening words on private sector development and attracting international investment into Guyana. Ms. McConnell, we're very grateful for your words, and I dare say I am a little more informed and a tiny bit more inspired by your message. Right? leaves a, a lot of room for improvement in the future and hopefully working together on things such as the AML. Next, I would like to thank our sponsors with help of whom this event would not be possible, and also the magazine. I would like to thank Impressions, Macorp, Republic Bank, Anson McCall, BK International, Guy Oil, The New Guyana School, Caribbean Container, Guyana Metal Recyclers Association, John Lewis Styles, Denmore Garment Manufacturers, John Fernandes Limited, New Chiving Chinese Restaurant, Demara Tobacco. I'd also like to extend thanks to the Executive Committee and staff of the Chamber 
for their enormous cooperation in the organization of this agenda.